Our next guest is Jason, and he's the co-founder of Strength School and is Southeast Asia's first Clifton Strengths Finder coach and performance coach to CEOs. But before doing what he did today, this is pretty crazy, he had 32 businesses and jobs. Later you can see, okay? Really weird jobs. <laughs> Super random things like creating dental ads, dental software distributor, logo designer, professional wheel writer, busker, okay, anyways, a lot of things. He's going to share more about how he navigated through his wilderness phase of finding out what he likes to do and how he has grown deeper awareness of his unique strengths and weaknesses to find his true passion. Let's give a round of applause for Jason! Hello, hey. I feel like I'm speaking to modern Jesus. Modern right? Jesus, Your hair yeah. is quite funny. <laughs> and this one is... Okay, well, Jason... Good, so, good to be here. Good to be glad here. <laughs> glad to be here. Hi, everybody. Here. Okay, I'll tell you a fun fact, okay? I don't know if you remember this, but when I first graduated school, the first job I applied for, the only job I applied for was for strength school. I wrote um, a very nice cover letter sharing with him my story to Jason, okay? And I asked my friend, um, hey, do you know the CEO of, or the co-founder of strength school and it's him? And I said, can I write him an email? And Jason read it and... Well, I, I got hired, so. Wow. <laughs> yep. I got hired. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She but so she's bad. no more with us. She's, <laughs> she's here. <laughs> she's awesome. I found my strengths. <laughs> yes, yeah, fantastic. That's the, that's the whole idea. Yeah, so 32 businesses and jobs. Yes. Okay, can you share with us just a few weird ones? Uh, busker on the streets of Orchard Road. Right, so um, I think I gave you a picture of that. Yeah, so you did. Is that that yeah. is it. I actually couldn't tell which one you are. It's like, I'm no, the one. Honestly, because of your hair. <laughs> I'm the one on the right. Okay, so I used to be like oh, super okay, okay. decent cut and all that. So I used to earn. Guess how much you earn per hour? As a Just shout it. Yeah. Guess how much? Twenty. Twenty. No, six dollars per hour. Oh damn. Yeah. So you split you, among two people. Uh, yeah. Why yeah. you don't do yourself? Uh, Kai cannot sing. He sings. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So write songs and we did it together. So we put a hat there. So that's one. I also did. Uh, I did a lot of uh, professional will writing. I'll go to a hospital, go and somebody on their deathbed will write the will for oh, them. Nice. I did dental software. I did a lot of different things. Uh, I. Um, so and you were good at it. You you won a logo design competition. Yeah, it's for, not it's not just things yeah. that you're not good at. So for logo design, I, I tried to go into it, uh, and uh, I didn't know anything about it. So I first started just drawing on my mm. like during lunchtime, twelve o'clock to one o'clock. Just started drawing, and it's like, oh wow, this logo not nice. Then I draw again. Oh, this one better, right? So <laughs> so then after a while, I was like, okay, I need to know software. Then I learned about it. Then you know what? I need to know whether I'm good at it. So I went to the competition, and then I won first prize worldwide. Wow. Yeah. 248 so can I just entries. Ask yeah. why, since you're good at logo design, yeah. why didn't you just do logo design? Yeah, so that's the thing. When I am good at something, it doesn't mean that that is my calling. That needs to be on the Tumblr quote. It comes <laughs> that needs to be somewhere. It's so true. Just because you're good at something yeah. doesn't mean that is your thing. Yeah. You don't have to choose to do it. It might not be your calling. That's exactly. so important. So, so in the 32 different jobs and businesses, I was good at many of them. So even for insurance, financial advisory, I was MDRT, Million Dollar Roundtable, earning very good money, but I just died inside. Every time I go and say, hey, you know, let me talk about your finances. I was so good at it, but I died inside every time. So it doesn't mean that when you're good at something, you should pursue it, especially when your boss, your family members, or your friends tell you about it. It most likely is wrong. The only person that can tell you what you're good at is yourself. And it's something inside here that, which we'll go through an activity later, it yeah. sparks a joy inside. There's a fire inside mm. that you, you don't even create the fire. Fire is already there. Mm. You just fan it. Yeah. And, and all of us have different fires. For you, probably, is the speaking. Yeah. Right? For me, it's something about personal development, hacking things. And yeah, so, so you just have to fan it, but you've got to find it first. Oh. Yeah, and it's sometimes so hard to find it when there's so many different voices around you saying you should choose this path, you should choose yep. that path. How do you decide to continue fanning your fire yep. and ignore the people around you? So it was a bit rebellious. Um, even when I was 18, when I went to army, I was trying to do stocks and option trading and all that. So I'll sneak in a laptop and then, not allowed. Uh, so I sneak in a laptop and then I was trying to do that. Then I just, in the last 15, 20 years, I just kept trying different mm -hmm. things. And the thing about it, if I give a best analogy, 
when it comes to who are, which career is best for you, think of your, your own dressing or fashion last time. When you were younger, when I say primary school or secondary school, what kind of dressing were you in? Oh, you thought this was good for you. Mm. But then after a while, you get older and older, you try out different things. Then you say, oh, oh this one is better for me. I'll, I'll stick to this. But mm. then after a while, when you experimented enough, you know that that is my style. Yeah, beautiful. And no, even though people will tell you, hey, you look good in this, but it's like, something's not, not right. Yeah. It's, it's not me. So same thing, you need to try. And then it, there is that immediate feedback that, hey, I feel, I feel alive. I feel energized. It's, mm. This is something right. And it might take time. It might a lot take of time. time. And it's important yeah. to not feel pressured yeah. by society's ideal timeline and instead trust your own timeline yeah. so that you would allow yourself the space, the safe space to find that joy. Because it's so hard to trust and to listen to that joy when yeah. you try to please everybody else. Exactly. So I like what you say about energize. Yeah. But there's that no timeline, fire. that's the thing. Some people will find it in the third job. Some people will find it like me in the 32nd job. And who knows 10 years from now? We don't yeah, know. I might, be, I might be doing something different, yeah. but I know that, that I've already kind of like known these are the fires I have. Mm. It will be roughly around there. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. change to suddenly I go back to insurance and all that. Mm. It will never be there. So you, as long as you start tasting different jobs so and different careers, so for me, I think one thing that just keeps coming back for me is this thing called personal development. Mm. How do I grow the fastest? How do I hack success? What is the fastest way to reach a certain level of expertise? I'm always intrigued by that and I'm always intrigued by personal development. Mm. So you give me time alone, I will read up personal development, I will watch shows on personal development. Mm. Nobody has to force That's me. That's how you know when you do it in your free time. Exactly. So if you, if you know you gravitate towards it, um, one good exercise is if you go to a library, what books do you gravitate towards? What books do you, when you pick up, you can't stop. Yeah. Time, yeah. two hours just fly by. Those are the books, those are the fire that's already inside. You don't know where it comes from because even for me and my sibling, my brother, we have very different fires. Yeah. So it is, you just have it, but you need to go and discover it. Beautiful. So I think that um, this is where I want to like have you lead the audience sure. through an activity yeah. because you have found that fire to fan yeah. and you have been through so many different jobs. How can we lead our audience? How can we lead all of you guys to try to find that fire within them? Okay, so when it comes to this thing, we, I can also call it passion, but passion is, is too vague. So mm. I break it down to a few things. One of the main things about passion is this thing called strengths. Mm, so okay. This both, is the point in time you guys can maybe like, you have notepad or anything. Yeah, so you have a notepad. If you don't have, uh, you can open up your notes. We're going to do a small, very simple exercise where you can understand what your strengths are. And when you know your strengths, you will know like this is one pillar of my passion. You should gravitate and go towards jobs that, that do this. Okay, so everybody ready? So in a notepad or in a, in a, in a notebook, you want to write down things that energize. So one thing on a, so if you do it on a white piece of paper and all that, one side is energized and one side is drained. So two things, energize and drain. And I want you to write down as many things as possible, either in your job or if you're in university, you're in a club or whatever it is, any task that you have that energize you, that, that you look forward to that task. So give you an example for me, when it comes to anything designing, I look forward to it. So I'll write down designing stuff. It could be brochures, it could be anything. Another thing that I'm really energized doing, anything to do with personal development. So I'm energized about like coaching people. Oh, I'm, I'm, when I coach people, I'm energized. So think of tasks that you do or meetings that you attend. It's like, hey, this meeting, I look forward to it. That's all the energize. Mm. Okay? And then the other part, which is the drain, every meeting or every task that drains the life out of you. <laughs> so for example, for me, if you ask me to go into a meeting about finances, drains the life out of me. So, or uh, budget planning drains the life out of me. So write down tasks that number one energizes you and then the other one is drains you, right? And some of you, when you see that, when you start writing down, you will realize that, hey, actually some things in my drain is the very things that people say I'm good at. So that is, um, that is a false, it's, a, it's, a, it's, um, it's something false and it's almost a, like a lie because mm -hmm. the things that drain you is actually your weaknesses and the things but that energize you. But you might be trained. 
to get better, maybe to make people proud. Yes, so or your boss or somebody will say that, hey, you're so good at that. Uh, you should do more of it. So a lot of times when I coach um, senior directors and all that, they are in a job that they don't like, but they have grown, they got promoted so much to a point where, oh, my boss say I'm good at it, give me more opportunities. My boss say I'm good at it, give me more, more opportunities. After 20 years, they're somewhere where they just, they can close their eyes, they do a job well, but they hate it. Mm. Right? So this activity, Energize and Drain, Anything that you write down in the Energize, you want to look at it and you want to understand that, hey, those are the things that in your future career, that's going to be the one that will lead you to that fulfillment, joy, happiness. Yeah. And that's where, once you have that, you can start to say that, okay, I'm going to perform at my level best. Because if you have no performance, nobody's going to pay you. Yeah. So passion alone doesn't cut it. You need world-class performance. But of all the things, what do you what do you go into? Mm. You go into things that you already have a fire. Mm. And then you will grow faster and you will be more diligent. That means at 7 p.m., 12 midnight, you're still researching on things. Why? Because that fire is there. Mm. Mm. It doesn't lose steam. It doesn't go off. Mm. So the things that energize you, you look forward to. Yeah, I just want, you know. Anything that you look forward to. The things that drain you, be aware that even though your boss tells you that you're good at it, just be aware that that's not your strength. It's your weakness. Yeah. Even though... They pat you on the back and say, wow, well, well done. Let me give you more portfolio or bigger opportunities. Mm. Be aware that that's a trap. You need to, you need to own it. And that's, your, that's, that's you. You are the only one that knows your best next career move. Don't mm. leave it to your boss. Don't leave it to your colleagues. Yeah. So things that energize you are the ones that... The funny thing about it, Ray, things that energize you, it doesn't change over time. Interesting. It doesn't suddenly like... Okay, so give you an example. Who here... Okay, give you an exercise. Huh? From a scale of 0 to 10, give me a number, right? 0 to 10. If I say a task, you are energized, you put 10. You are drained, you put 0 or 1, okay? Everybody? Okay, so give you a task. Excel spreadsheets. Okay, everybody Some give me a number. Some people will give Excel five. spreadsheets. Someone said 10. Okay, 0. Darren, 0. <laughs> My mom loves it. 0. Okay, 10, yeah. So your mom, 10. Okay, so she better do a job. There's something with oh, okay. Excel spreadsheets. So she helps me with my taxes. <laughs> yeah, so another one, for example, design work, 0 to 10. 10 being you feel energized, 0 mean like, what, drain, like kryptonite to Superman. Number, number, everybody, number. For me, it's 10. Okay, 0, yeah, you shouldn't do it. 1, yeah, don't touch, yeah. 10, you're 10. Yeah, something about design. So design is going to be one layer of your future calling. Your, your best job ever has something to do with design. Yes, just now was Excel spreadsheet. What number? 0, okay. So... <laughs> You can still do Excel and your boss might want you to do Excel, but just help him understand or her understand that that's not your strength. Mm. Yeah, I can do this, boss. I'm good at this, but wait till you see my grade, which is something to do with design and other things. Yeah. So yeah. those are the tasks that once you map it out, you kind of know that, hey, that I have six, seven things. Mm. And, and for me, it's like, oh, I, I, I like public speaking and I didn't know that until I did drama in church. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, I kind of like that. Then I did like finance and I did like, courses. It's like, oh, I was talking about finance. It's like, oh, everybody laugh when I'm talking about finance. How come? So strange. Yeah. Then, then it, it mapped. Then after a while, then now I'm doing what I'm doing, which is workshops mm. and coaching. Okay, can you share what is the benefit of finding your strengths and finding that passion and that fulfillment? Yeah. How does it feel? And what is the benefit of that? I'm speaking to people mm. who might feel okay in their job. Yeah. You yeah. know, but... Yeah. They have that hint that, hey, I think there's something out, out there. I don't know if it's worth mm. it to chase it. Yeah. So what's the benefit? Sell it on us. Sell, sell, us. sell it to us. Yeah. So I, I think <laughs> all of us have different um, seasons in your life. Mm. If you have a season where you have a lot of financial burden and responsibility, then be wise about it. Don't say like, hey, suddenly, like, hey, just go and try something. But understand that if you don't follow something that you know that you're built to do, it's almost like you're an eagle that has been running your entire life. Or you're an ostrich that has been trying to fly. The eagle must fly, the ostrich must run. And somehow or other, it's built into them. We can see it in the, in the physical aspect. Mm. For us, human beings, I cannot see your strength when I look at you. It is in the task that you do. But when you do that, you come alive. Alive means what? When you go back home, you have more energy. Mm. When you're less irritable. When you think about, am I having a good life? Most likely you will say yes. 
So there is a lot of meaning when it comes to following what you know that you're built to do yeah. and, and going all the way up to this thing called calling. That means oh. you, are, you are where you should be. Yeah. But there is a fight and the fight is in finding out. Mm. So some of you, you will find it in three jobs if you're very lucky. If you're not, then 10 jobs. But I guarantee you, if you do not give up, you will find it. Mm. And the whole world will be looking at you strangely and like, my goodness, you just gave up this for that? Why? But after a while, something inside you'll be like, you don't want to be at 80 years old looking back and like, actually, I was very good at design. I could have gone already. Yeah. Gone already. And it's, the whole idea is that you are a unique individual. And I, and I firmly believe that all of us here, we can be the king or queen to one mountain. Mm, wow. All of us here, there is a mountain waiting for you. You can be the king or queen. Mm. And there are a lot of other mountains. And for other people, that other people will be a, mount, a king or queen in that mountain, but you need to find your own. Yeah, wow. And you find your own, I guarantee you, once you hit that passion, then you gear up into performance. That means, am I good enough? Does the world think I'm good enough? But what's the will, will the world pay me to do that? Because if you don't have performance after that passion, it's a hobby. Beautiful. Yeah. And I like how you said that each and every one of us can be the king and queens of that mountains. I think it's so important to know that when people give us advice, they're giving it standing on top of their mountain yes. and not yours. You're the only person that can find your mountain and stand on top of it. And it's so important to believe that you have that mountain yep. that you can stand on. So I think that this exercise, you can definitely do it after this show as yep. well. Yep. Um, I think we'll just give time to one question. Sure. Um, and that question is from Brent. So where's Brent? Oh, so yeah, you are the guy, guy Richard, Richard. Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you wanted to speak. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, how do you find your strength and focus on that strength and build success and achievement to it? Student, oh, you're, you're what, what year now and what? I'm a student from SIM. University? La. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a lot of things in student life uh, doesn't really prepare you for the real working world. Um, but what would help a lot is that you have a lot of CCAs. Have as many CCAs and association as possible that you can manage while you're studying. Mm. Go, to out, go outside, go and join some clan, some association, I don't know what. <laughs> if you're Hokkien, go and join Hokkien, whatever it is. Like. Go and join associations that you're passionate about or you believe in that cause. Go there, set up a committee or join a committee and start trying out. Hey, maybe I can help you do this, maybe I can help you do that. Because within these associations, it's, a, it's almost like a small, medium enterprise. Yeah. You need everything. Finance, admin, uh, marketing, branding. You start to discover. And then when you start to do all these CCAs, which is really where you can test out what you really are passionate about in life, then when you finish your school, you'll be like, yeah, in these three associations, I'm always this and I'm good at that. Then you know like, okay, that's where I should pursue. So try to find as many opportunities as possible to let the rubber hit the road. Mm. Don't think about it, don't just read books. Test it out. And I, I do feel that associations and any kind of organisation outside uh, where you're part of a committee and you have one role mm. helps you a lot. Then you know that, hey, this is good for me. Yeah. I feel fired up. Or if you're in this role, let's say you ask me to do treasurer, oh, I can do it very well. Oh, suck big time. I really, like, I'm dying. So mm. maybe I shouldn't do this. Yeah, but the secret is to not just do a lot of stuff, but to reflect and ask yourself, how do I feel about this? Yes, always coming back to the energize and dream. If you're energized doing it, something is correct, even though you are lousy in it. Yeah. So and I also think that people who are not students can apply this too. Definitely. In your current jobs. Yes. Even if you're like kind of eh about it, what are the things that you enjoy? Right? Maybe yes. you enjoy the people aspect. You don't yeah. really like certain aspects. So you can still, using your current job, your current career, identify what energizes you and what drains you, and then use the information for the next career or to do some extra stuff outside of work. There are plenty. Yeah, a lot. Plenty of clubs yeah. outside of work. Yeah. yeah. So inside of work, if you're, if you're um, employed right now, um, the, the main thing is that you need to have a boss that believes in helping you to, to explore. Mm. If you don't have a boss, I would say leave. Really. 
if you don't have a boss that helps you to discover your strengths, hey, boss, I want to try this out. Say, she's my boss. Hey, boss, can I try this out? Say, no, stick to your lane. That's it already. Your, your, your lane is all the way. But yeah. if raise my boss and say, hey, boss, can I try this out? And then she's like, yeah, maybe why don't you try it for a mm. short while? Like maybe still do your current job. Still I give you do your current job. Do yeah. I still or, give you opportunities and role. Like yes. They are trying to find a middle ground for you. At least they are trying. They are yes. not like dismissing you. Or if you're really hardworking, which I would, I would say that, boss, don't worry. I'll still do my work. I'll do it after. Mm. So yeah, you don't even have to think beautiful. about it. But I want to attend that meeting about branding. Even mm. though I have no experience in branding, can I just sit in? Mm. I will still deliver what I deliver. deliver. Mm. So always seek opportunities where you can study, start tasting the job roles that you have. Mm. I think that's a beautiful ending. And I think that's really, really practical advice. And always make sure that you're in a job where you are supported. Yeah. Just know that employee and employer is a two-way relationship. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're hired, you are like, I don't like to say that. Yeah, but, but, you, <laughs> but you, can you, can you can negotiate. You can negotiate if yeah. you have a boss that believes in your development. Yeah. If you That's don't have, point. leave. Find the right people. Find somewhere else and yeah. try to find somewhere else. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jason, most for being with us welcome. here today and for sharing really practical tips, but also inspiring us to find our own mountain and not take advice from people standing on their own mountain. Yeah. Find people that yeah. support you and truly want the best for your development. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>